Hey there! I contacted Yardaled and I said I get a lot of review requests for the Viceroy pens because I show people my Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish rather a lot. It's made it to a bunch of greatest of all time pen videos, it's been in my personal pen videos. So I know people really love it, but people often ask me what's the difference between the Grand, the Viceroy Grand, this model, and the Standard and the Pocket. Because all of them come in that beautiful Victorian finish, but what really is the difference? So I think it would be interesting to do a video on that. And I had a lovely conversation with Emma from Yard Lead, and she said, Hashtag BOOM! Actually, that's not what she said, uh, but she did say, I will send you these pens so you can show your audience that. And I think that is incredibly generous, very kind, but I also think this will be a very useful couple of videos because now I have access to the Viceroy pocket on top and the standard in the Victorian finish and then there's also the Viceroy Grand. So what I will do is I will review each of these. So today we're looking at the pocket, we're going from small to large. Then I will do another video where I show you the uh, standard. So then you have two videos, full reviews. The Viceroy Grant has already been reviewed. And then when I've done those two videos, I will do one fountain pen shootout between the three. Where I will really try to focus on differences and similarities between the pens so that if you are choosing or deciding which of these pens to choose, which ones to purchase. Of course you should purchase them all, obviously. But given that these are not $50 pens, you may want to really figure out which one is the best for you. So in that shootout, that's what I'll focus on. But that's not for today. Today we're only going to look at the pocket. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But before I do that, I'll do a writing sample. Let's not waste any time, let's get started. Okay, the Yard of Lead Pocket Viceroy. Comes in this cute little box. You can pull off the cardboard and then you can pull out this box. There is a cartridge. There is this odd looking device which protects the nib because when you get the pen you get it like this, with the cap loose and they're wrapped in paper, but I have taken that paper out because I don't want to keep it. And then you can, in theory, lift up this bed. Sorry, I'm reaching around a tripod, so forgive me if I just do that off camera. That's, why, why am I still holding this? Um, now we have some paperwork. There we go. User guide, warranty, nicely done, nice off-white cream paper, which I think is very, very pleasant. And we have a silver polishing cloth with yard lead on there. Okay, let me put that out of the way. The pen, I'll zoom in a bit. Bit of a mood killer, but Oh, isn't it cute? It's so small. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see it is not the largest one in the world. This is right next to a Lamy Safari, so it is not a massive pen, but it is called the Pocket People, so that's exactly what you would expect. The craftsmanship in these pens is excessive. It's incredible and exceptional, and I can't stress that enough. So in the Viceroy Grand, there are, I read that actually this morning on Instagram, uh, Yardalad posted that, 3,000 individual hammer strikes to create this pattern. And this is not done by a machine, this is done by craftsmen, craftspeople, I should say, who have been doing this for quite a while, and that means that every pen will be a little different. So let's cover the parts of this pen. On top, your finial, you can see it's very shiny, you can see my camera, you can even see me. Hey! So there is that. Then you have this wonderful vintage looking clip, which I've always absolutely loved. It's such a 
timeless design. It has yacht lead imprinted on this. It has the two rivets. It's superb. Then you have the cap with this beautiful pattern, a tiny spot they have left smooth so you can put in an engraving. Now, of course, a pen this size, yeah, there isn't a whole lot of space, but you could have it engraved if you want to. And then here, you have several hallmarks. And every time I think I should probably look them up, and 925, that's the 92.5% silver content to make it uh, to make it uh, uh, sterling silver. There is the, the YOL, the Yardalet logo here. There's other things. There is, uh, a, a, I think, a regional stamp for the area where these pens are made. So I had to take a sip of tea there. Uh, there is uh, the year. There's a year code, uh, which I want to say is this particular shape at the bottom here, but I could be wrong. So there's all the stuff. You can look it all up online, though. Um, then there is the barrel with this beautiful pattern that just continues and then there is this weird little knob at the end which makes sense because this being a pocket pen it posts very securely when you do that and I, I personally need that otherwise I can't write with it but I have uh, handed this pen to people with smaller hands who could actually use it unposted. I, I, I personally cannot. Okay, the nib, a number five nib. This is 18 karat gold. It's imprinted with the Yardlet logo and that's an actual engraving, not a laser engraving, as one might expect. Uh, there is an 18 karat 750 mark on there and a B for broad because obviously I requested a broad nib, as I would. Then we have the feed right there, plastic feed, and this unscrews. cartridge, simple standard international cartridge, and there's a little rubber o-ring there which makes sure that your pen is being metal on metal does not accidentally unscrew and I will say that is very effective. So, what are we looking at beyond this? Uh, this, <clears throat> you can get them in fine, medium and broad nibs and the price is 695 pounds, that is uh, about 900 US dollars. So these are not cheap pens, but I will come back to that when I discuss likes and dislikes. I think the most important part for us right now is to see how this pen writes. Now, I have been a bit of a sneak and I have actually refilled a cartridge with Waterman Blue Black ink so that I would have the same ink in all three, <coughs> sorry, all three pens. Yard or Lead Viceroy Pocket, nib, 18K, broad, ink, I feel like Gordon Ramsay, whisk, mix, serve, etc. Um, what else? Waterman. Blue black. Waterman had their own line of inks, I don't know if they still do, but those were some really nice colours. Uh, but anyway, this is Waterman. Writing. Pretty smooth. Slight touch of feedback here, but in my mind the type of pleasant feedback that I really like. Don't forget the camera microphone always picks up a lot of this type of noise. It makes it sound very scratchy, but this I can tell you is not a scratchy nib. Bit of fast writing. And yes, you can make these nibs sing, as you just heard. Interesting bit of resonance. Okay. Wetness. Not a gusher, but in my mind quite nice. Okay, as always, very careful. Line variation. I have found that these nibs start to railroad very quickly, but they're not meant to be flex nibs, right? So you can, if you're careful, you can squeeze out a bit of line variation for sure but they're not meant to be flex nibs. Okay, reverse writing, for those of you who enjoy such a thing, is possible. Takes this from a broad, not the world's broadest broad, I would say, but a, a good broad nib to, I would say, extra fine. And as you can see, it works. Gets a little less smooth, but it does work. So, there you have it. I think we need to move on to what I like. And, whoops, didn't want to write anymore and what I don't like.
There we go again. It just didn't like to be held upside down, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's check it out. Okay. What do I like, what do I not like about the Yardled Viceroy Pocket? Well, I think there's a lot to like, and I'll be fair, I'm very enthusiastic about these pens. I've had an, a number of Yardleds over the years, and I've never been disappointed. They almost invariably write very well, and these pens are not an exception. So, I mean, if you've seen that in the, in the writing sample, I think they, they are very pleasant writers. There's a couple of things I really like about this pen. So, first of all, the, the, the cuteness factor of this smaller pocket model is rather lovely. It's very classy. It goes very well in, say, a breast pocket because it's a great size for that. The clip works very nicely. It's nice and springy, so you can't carry it in a, in a breast pocket without any issues. It's lovely to have this pen and this beautiful finish in a smaller version because not everybody wants a massive Viceroy Grand. It's very heavy because of all the silver. This is a much more manageable pen, but of course it will be smaller. I love the fact that it has the same fit and finish, so to speak, as the larger models. That same hand-hammered pattern, which I will say is stunning. There's no other way to put it. I also love that these are handmade pens, right? You, the, 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 this pattern is hammered in by hand, so no two pens will be the same. And yes, there may be a relatively high price, 695 pounds, it's about 900 US, that's expensive, especially for a pocket pen. And the silver content alone does not really warrant that price. But again, don't forget, this is hand hammered. An artist has spent quite a long time to create this finish. This is not a pen that is churned out by a machine and is made of precious resin uh, and they can basically make hundreds and hundreds of these a day, right? This is something that takes time and effort and you feel that quality. There's no two ways about it. You feel the quality that's made and if you look at the finish and you understand this as handwork, then it's so even, it's so consistent it shows the mastery of the person making it and that I think is, is very special and something that in this world a lot of people appreciate. We are moving back a little bit towards appreciating handwork and not necessarily wanting machine-made things all the time. I love that. The section and barrel are flush. Now you may see a little bit of a gap, that, that black line there, it's tiny. It's rather cold here so when I take these pens in and out I sometimes notice that that gap varies a little bit but then it is minus 30 degrees out today so it's that type of temperature that may work a little bit on the metal in all it's actually very good the little rubber o-ring in the section works very well to make sure you don't accidentally unscrew this so that that I think is is very nice the final thing I can say is I mean the posting of course that works very well a nice tight snap and you have a nicely sized pen I love all of that. I love everything about it. I love the hallmarks. I love the clip. I love the classiness of this design and the timelessness of this design. I think all of that is great. Things I don't like about it so much. There really isn't that much. There really isn't that much. One question I had was, if this is 695, why is this pen also 695? I'm not saying that there should necessarily be a, a, a giant difference, but the Grand is 895 pounds. Why are both of these 695, given that the pocket is a bit smaller? Now, the thing I was thinking about, this, the, the, the explanation I came up with, which may or may not be correct, I haven't verified this with the Ardalan, but I can see how this After 3 might not be the most popular of models, relatively speaking. I can see a lot of people going for the Grand because it's a flagship, and I can see a lot of people going for the full-size pen. Not everybody may enjoy a pocket-size pen. So I can see how this price would just be driven quite simply by demand. Maybe they do not, they do not make as many pockets as they make standards and Grands and that's just speculation on my part. In all, I think the most important thing for me is, yes, it's a high price, there's no two ways about it. $900, that's, that's substantial. But then you're dealing with what is basically a hand-finished pen. And again, creating this pattern, if you look at how fantastic that is, I can see how that would simply demand money. It takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a lot of skill. And some people will say, well, that's not worth it. Of course, and that's up to you. But to me, that is what sets these pens apart. You buy something, 
and you know that this is a pen that has been made by someone or at least has been finished by someone who knows what they're doing and who has created a beautiful artisanal product that's the best way I can put it it's an artisanal pen this is not spewed out by a machine it's finished by hand and that makes it very special someone has spent a lot of time with your pen and to me that's worth a lot okay I hope this was useful again a very warm and sincere thank you to Yardelet for sending me this pen I really appreciate it guys I hope this was useful and I'm glad to see you later Bye-bye.